folks, Robert Quigley here. We're on the road to the White House, Washington, D.C. Today, we are working on our, our history radio shows. We're taking bits and pieces of days gone by in history and bringing them forward and showing how uh, they have uh, sewn a thread through time and how they tie into the Quigley administration. So let's have a look at veterans, the Veterans Administration, and how we have come to the point where we are today. As we all know, military service has been an honorable way to serve America and to make a life for oneself all throughout the history of our country. We have proud and brave men and women who risk their life to preserve the freedoms that we enjoy today. They do their very best to keep the peace on a hostile planet that is quickly spiraling into World War III. Climate impacts, resource shortages, the Chinese moving ships into the Western Pacific, near Japan and South Korea, down near the Philippines and Malaysia. We see the Chinese building up military troops on the Chinese-Indian border. We see Russia and its invasion of Ukraine, and we fully expect Belarus to become part of the war in the near term. We see the Russians teaming up with the Iranians. Folks, everywhere we look around this planet, whether we're talking about protecting the U.S. border with Mexico, uh, protecting the homeland from invasion, we have veterans left, right, and center, and everywhere. In short, folks, we have always owed the veterans a great debt all across America and all throughout history. But the history shows us that we have not been that kind at all to the people that gives us the pride and stature that every American enjoys infinitely in today's world. In many cases, veterans are not met with open arms when they return home from the battlefield. Oh my gosh, 50% of veterans are likely to become homeless due to poverty, due to a lack of support systems due to abhorrent living conditions. One third of the population across the United States consists of veterans. On top of that, 1.5 million of our vets are constantly at risk of being homeless. Oh my. By itself, homelessness was first recognized as a national issue in the 1870s. So we're basically talking about the post-Civil War era all the way up until today. Regrettably, the issue is still with us in one form or the other. As time went by, the country went from small benevolent veterans organizations that would have been organized by counties and states and communities. Uh, nursing homes, retirement homes were developed I've been to a famous one down in Biloxi, Mississippi, for example, but more was needed. Eventually, in 1921, the administration of the day consolidated all of these haphazard piecemeal veterans programs into uh, something that, that was called the, the overarching National Vedra, uh, Federal Veterans Program. And that essentially took care of all of the vets from World War I. Because by this time in 1921, there were a few left from the Civil War. They were still around. They were included in the program. But essentially, the Veterans Bureau was created in 1921. And then we, we, we fast forward to 1930, and we, we, we see that uh, we had more consolidation uh, in this area. Uh, eventually, uh, President uh, Herbert Hoover signed an executive order which elevated the Veterans Bureau to a federal administration uh, uh, cabinet level uh, position, you know, the Veterans Administration, which is what we have today. 
Now we have laws in place that protect our men and women of service, and many pro uh, programs provide them with medical care, uh, 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 lower cost mortgages, uh, various uh, benefits like uh, like golf courses, educational loans, and so forth. But overall, folks, uh, we need to look at the issue of homelessness with vets. You know, California recently introduced a program where uh, the uh, where where they, along with the Veterans Administration, allowed a collection of tiny houses to be built on Veterans Administration hospital property land. Uh, we need to do this all across the country. Tiny houses are an inexpensive housing solution to this problem. They come in sizes anywhere from 100 square feet, 150, 200, 250 square feet. Folks, I don't know if you're familiar with the tiny house community, but tiny houses are the answer to the homeless population all across America. Leaving people on the streets to suffer and die, throwing them in jails to live behind bars and calling that providing a home, this is nonsense. These situations exist because the society at large has essentially washed its hands of the responsibility and, and duties and obligations we owe the veterans across America. We call upon them to defend this country, to promote American might, so each and every one of us can live with our heads high knowing that we are on top of the human mountains, as it, as it were. And yet, our very own veterans, we despise, we care less about. They're, 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 they're not worth uh, taking care of. Folks, when the Quigley administration gets to the White House, there are so many changes that are going to be happening across the federal government, across our society. And this is just one of them. So, so there you have it, folks. We are going to make a difference in the lives of millions of veterans. Folks, nothing is free in America. Campaigns are expensive. We must spend money to make America great for everybody. In that vein, we have a presidential raffle. We have 20 million raffle tickets to sell during the Robert Quigley for President campaign. We're giving away more than 19,000 prizes. Those prizes include, we're going to give away a house. We're going to pay off a mortgage. We're going to give away 15 Tesla automobiles. We are going to give away a half a dozen mobile homes. We're talking about Thor, the hurricane model, top of the line, folks. In addition to that, we're going to give away home energy systems, uh, about a dozen home energy systems, in fact. And those are going to include wind turbines, solar panels, battery packs, heating systems, all the wiring boxes and bells and whistles to make those particular homes energy self-sufficient. In addition to that, folks, in this presidential raffle, we are going to fund four brand new small businesses somewhere in America. And the value of those grants are going to be up to $250,000, specifically for the creation and operation of a new small business. Now, folks, in addition to those raffles, we are going to be giving away around-the-world trips. Uh, we're going to be giving away uh, around-the-world backpacking trips, which are going to be mostly on the airlines. We're going to be giving away an around-the-world trips, that's plural, and those are going to be cruises. In addition to that, we're giving away computer systems. We're giving away Apple gift cards, Amazon gift cards, Visa gift cards. In addition to those, we're giving away Cracker Barrel gift cards. Walmart gift cards, Starbucks gift cards, and of course, Papa John gift cards. Now, most of these 19,000 plus prizes have odds of about 1 in 100. 
which is very, very good in relation to uh, the lottery tickets that we buy around the country. So again, we have over 19,000 prizes. Raffle tickets are $5 each. Uh, for most of the prizes, your odds of winning are 1 in 100. And we've got 20 million raffle tickets to sell. Of course, all that money supports uh, the, the campaign and the, and the campaign machine for the Robert Quigley for President campaign. Uh, in addition to the raffle, we also have a campaign hat. Uh, the, it's a green color. It makes you look smart. makes you look sexy. has a nice logo on the front. And again, both the cap and the raffle tickets can be bought on the campaign website, robertquigleyforpresident.com. Now, in addition to those items, folks, we also have live shows that will be occurring all across America in 2023 and 2024. We will be performing in comedy clubs, in local theaters, in academic theaters. Uh, basically, the show is part entertainment, part educational, and part stump speech. Every show will have Q&A. Every show will be recorded as we're making both a documentary and a movie uh, of the campaign and the life and times of Robert Quigley. Uh, so again, folks, you can go to the robertquigleyforpresident.com website. We will put the schedule up on the website as it firms up, and you can buy tickets to the shows on the website. In addition to those items, folks, we have a book that's under production as we talk. It should be up on, in the market in about three or four weeks. Uh, it's also going to be for sale on the, the campaign website. And essentially, it's a biography of Robert Quigley. You will also be able to find that on Amazon, Barnes & Noble, and Walmart. So folks, if any of those items don't tickle your fancy, we also take plain, old-fashioned political donations. Again, all of these items can be found on the robertquigleyforpresident.com website. Uh, look under the Buy and Donate button. There's more description for each of these items and each of these prizes. And with your help, together, we can make America great for everybody.